Hello everyone. Welcome to Vigyan World. Today I am going to discuss the concept of diet sum of subspaces. Just a quick information before starting that if you are new to our channel, watch this video till the end to get better clarity and do give a thumbs up if you find this to be useful. So without any delay, let's get started. Before starting with the definition of direct sum, we should we have some prerequisites in order to understand this concept. The concept is a combination of two words. First is direct, and second is sum. So I assume that you you understand the meaning of sum of subspaces. Sum of subspaces. Even I can give you a quick recap. In short. So that when we move forward, you don't have any ambiguity or confusion. So let's move ahead first. So by sum of subspaces, what I mean that if suppose I have my vector space, let capital V denotes my vector space, denotes our vector space. This is standard convention. And let suppose say u1 comma u2 are two subspaces are two subspaces of v then their sum is the sum is defined as by this expression u1 plus u2 this denotes the sum of these two subspaces and it is defined as the collection of small u1 plus u2 such that this first element, this first guy u1 is coming from the first subspace capital U1 and the second guy u2 is coming from the second subspace u2. So this is the definition of sum of two subspaces. Now, I am interested in studying the direct sum. So, this, this direct sum is again some particular kind of sum of the given subspaces, but there is, there is a condition here which we impose on the, like in addition to this, I impose a certain condition here to get the concept of direct sum. Now, what is the condition? That this representation should be unique. That this representation should be unique. By this, what I mean, suppose by u1 plus u2, let me denote by this one. So, this set 1, which represent this equation 1, which represent the sum of these two subspaces, is a collection of all elements of this form u1 plus u2. That is, if I take if I choose some small x belong to capital U1 plus capital U2, that is uh, it denotes the sum, then this implies by definition that there exists some x in x1 suppose say in U1 and x2 belongs to U2. You can choose any symbol, I am just taking x1 and x2 for convenience in place of U1 and U2 such that this x can be uniquely expressed as x1 plus x2 in order for this sum to be a direct sum. Now, here we denote the direct sum by u1, this plus inside the circle u2. So, this is the notation for the direct sum of two subspaces of any given vector space. So, what is the basic requirement that the, the representation of any element should be unique? Whereas in case of sum, we don't have such a condition, like there can be more than one representation for any given element belong to that set. Yeah. Suppose uh, if I choose my R2, just an example to understand, R2 I know is a collection of all ordered pairs x comma y 
such that they both x and y are coming from the set capital R. Then in this case, let come back again. Just a second. I don't know what's happening with this cursor today. I think it should work now. Yeah, much better. Here we were. This, sorry for that. R2, R2 is this collection of all ordered pairs x comma y, where x and y are coming from R. Now the question is, can I express my R2 as a direct sum of two subspaces u1 and u2? Does there exist two subspaces u1 and u2 in order for this R2 to express as their direct sum? Now, uh, in, when I define the definition, just an idea of that that I want the representation to be unique. Now, here I, here's one more condition. If the zero vector, if the zero vector can be expressed uniquely, can be expressed uniquely as a sum, of elements from u1 and u2 then I'm done then that requirement for to check whether a given vector space can be expressed in direct sum of these two is automatically satisfied if I'll be able to show this condition that zero vector can be expressed uniquely that is for corresponding to zero there exists two elements one from u1 and second from u2 so that their sum is zero and these two should be unique these guys should be unique that's what i want so now in order to understand this uh, let's go back from where we started today if you see here there's some problem with this curse so just a second yeah let's come back so in the given uh, here in the given picture if you see here i have my r2 what is this basically my r2 or the xy plane. Now, any general element of R2 has this form here that I know. Now, uh, any element of R2 which has this form can be expressed as some of this. Now, try to understand this one. This is very important for us. Any element here, this this element belongs to R2. Now observe this one, this element. Where this this belong? This belong on this x-axis. Whereas this zero comma y, this element belongs to the y-axis. And now because these axes are nothing but the real line. What are these axes? These axes are the a real line. Basically, this is again an axis varying from minus infinity till infinity is thing, including zero is there. And again, similarly on the y-axis, it ranges from minus infinity to infinity, and zero is again an element of the y-axis also. And both these axes intersect only at this point. This is very important observation here that there is only one point which is common to both the axes. So, if you see here, now I'm able to easily verify that my any x y which belongs to R2, there exists an element this x comma zero plus, and this element comes from the real line, and there is another element that is zero comma y. This comes from again an element from R. Try to visualize this because here every element on the, this axis has a y coordinate 0. And ordinarily, like I can easily see that with a y coordinate 0, if I just see that point on the x axis itself, then it denotes a real line which I am representing by my capital R. 
So let me go down and just quickly read it. What I am trying to say that this R2, every element of R2 is now can be expressed as a direct sum of these two sets. Where again any element here is represented by my xy and this here I have an element of this form x here I have an element of this form y but because see I am in R2 so I have to again rewrite them in the same structure because so if you see I am able to write this as sum of elements of these two sets so from here we conclude that this R2 is a direct sum. Of course, it's a sum, but it's a direct sum of R and R again. Yes. Now, what I left to you to check that zero vector should have a unique representation. Unique representation. Let's now try to see another way of representing it, what I'm trying to say. Here I have, if, let me just improve it, a quick addition that I can write these as column vectors. See, this. Now, this can be uniquely expressed this. Now, you will get a better, better picture. Every element of R2 is nothing but an ordered pair. Now, my task is this 0, by this 0, I mean the 0, 0 vector. So I'm asking you to find unique x, here the unique element, and here one more unique element, so that it satisfies that condition. Fine. So now let's quickly rewrite, let's now quickly write the general definition of direct sum of a given, direct sum of subspaces of a given vector space. So what I mean by that, suppose let u1, u2, till um, these subspaces, these are subspaces of vector space V, then by direct sum, here I mean that the sum first, first word comes, the sum, this, this and this, this set, this set I am calling is a direct sum. the direct sum if each element if each element of this set this again set if each element of this set each element of u1 plus u2 plus um can be uniquely expressed can be expressed uniquely in only one way as sum of elements can be can be expressed uniquely in only one way in only one way one way as a sum of elements can be uniquely expressed as a sum like this. Where each these uj's or ui's belongs to capital UI for i running from 1 to till m. So this was the idea behind the direct sum of subspaces of any given vector space V. So, for this video, I think we should end it here. In the next video, I'm going to discuss some important properties based on direct sum and some good results. So, we're going to discuss in the next video. So, if you have any uh, any doubts in this one, you can drop me a comment in the comment box. And if you find this video to be useful, 
and then do give a thumbs up and if you are new to our channel do subscribe it and one quick information that there are some important leave and links which you should go in our about section regarding the telegram group where we where we upload every where we upload a problem every day and discuss its solution from different entrance examinations so thanks so much for watching we'll meet again in another video thanks so much.